All right, good morning, everybody. Good afternoon, actually. It's, uh, it's over noon now, and it's Monday morning, the 18th of July for the team meeting. So today, what I had on agenda was really focusing on conversations that are happening with uh, no. buyers and sellers right now. They're all a little different. If you're not muted, I'm going to mute Helen and Melody. If you're not muted, mute yourself. And then if you want to speak up, just obviously come off mute. It's very interactive. We want you to do that. And so some of you might have been on my coaching call this morning where we went into seller conversations and seller expectations. And, um, you know, the, the one major, major thing you have going for you is in the right side of the screen, maybe for you at least, and it is for me, Andrea. You, you've got to pull on Andrea's um, skill set, her experience and all that in this kind of market if you start getting sellers that are getting a little wonky, specifically sellers and buyers maybe as well. But we're finding sellers to be very demanding, very uh, interested in what you're doing more than ever. You know, here a couple of years ago, you could list a house and you had five offers the second you hit the button. And now we're going to have to work. Now it's a skill-based market that we're moving into for sure. Still busy. We're still seeing lots of activity and multiple offers if it's in the right price range and, and the right price point. Um, but it is getting more difficult and it will continue to do so. And I don't believe anybody on the call, except maybe Andrea and I have been in the market since 2010, when we were in a, you know, a strong buyer's market and sellers really had no power. Um, and so the expectations were much different, right? We were doing one-year listing agreements back then, mandatory. We were doing 6% because the sellers lost all their power and we had to do more uh, marketing to get those home, homes sold. So where you see commission compression coming in to the market between the seller and the agent, that commission compression will be lighter now. The, the value that you bring to the table as an agent is going to have merit with what they're willing to pay. Because if they, if they put it on for 4% total and find somebody who's willing to do it for two and two, it doesn't sell, it doesn't matter, right? So that's the big thing on mute, Christian. So um, when, we're, when we're looking at that, so I'll break it up into, I think, dialogue that's valuable for buyers and sellers, right? So right now, you've got a team around you. So if you have a listing appointment, don't wild, wild west this thing. Reach out and let us make sure we acquire, <laughs> make sure we help you acquire that, okay? Because when you go in alone, you're just as good as what you're able to bring to the table. But when you bring a team with you of, Randy, Andrea, whoever it may be, let us help you achieve that, you know, that listing appointment success for you. Glenn, Andrea, Randy, whatever it may be, you know, bring in all the guns because the listings are going to progressively become um, harder to sell and less, I don't want to call them less valuable, the values there, but now it's going to take, you know, creative marketing and creative strategies and structures along the way expectations are the greatest thing that I want to talk to you about. If you go into the listing appointment and you're setting the expectations that, hey, we're really going to watch this market, but it's in a, it's in a progressively declining market. Interest rates are up, declining sales, inventory is increasing. All these things are happening. We're leading with our best guess, our best um, market analysis for your price point and where we're starting. And then you can get into the dialogue that, hey, Mathematically, if we don't see an offer in the next 30 days, then it's time to evaluate the price structure. Even more valuable is to lay that out in advance. Think about the power that if I go, hey, Ferio, we're going to list your house today on July 18th. We're expecting to have really good feedback in the next two weeks. It takes about two weeks to get this all up to speed. So it's everywhere, right? Syndicates pretty quickly, but some of the things take a week or so. So if we go live today in two weeks, we'll have a good feel for showings and offers and uh, open house uh, traction, all those things. And then at that point, we're going to evaluate for the next two weeks. So now we're 30 days into this marketing strategy. And if we don't have an offer within 30 days, I think we have to lay out this price reduction strategy in advance, right? So that means that what we use is this little formula, and I'll, I'll share this guys with you guys, but I'm rolling back to like 2007 and eight now, because it's going to be exactly the same as we progress. So 
what we could say to our sellers is like, in 30 days, if we have good activity, we've had plenty of showings, we've had decent open house traction, but no offers, we've missed it between three and 5%. You know, that's a mathematical number that I think still holds true. So if it's 400 grand, 3% is 12 grand, 5% is, you know, what I say, 400 grand, 20 grand. So somewhere in that price range, we have to reduce that price. So if you've had no showings and no offers, you might've missed it more than that, five to 7%. And again, if it's been completely crickets for 30 days, you might've missed the point by 10%. So it sounds like big numbers, but think about it. If you put it on the market in this market and you've had no showings, no offers, no crickets, or crickets at the open house, the whole thing, you probably really did miss that mark by seven to 10%. Would we all agree with those numbers, right? We see a lot of good heads nodding. So that means if we have the conversation on day one, it's we're working on it together. If you have that conversation on day 27, they're going to think you're just greedy and trying to sell their house. Right? So that pre-facing conversation can be very, very valuable for you. Because if I, you know, even if I'm selling your car, let's just say Furio's got a uh, a beautiful car that's, uh, you know, really wanted in the area. And we, we list it for 10,000 bucks. If she's like there, I don't see any of these cars for under 10 grand. This thing's going to sell real quick. If we have the conversation that, Hey, in 30 days, if we still have it, we should take it to nine grand. Is that acceptable today? Because our hopes are all high that we're going to sell it faster. And we haven't sat with the rejection of the market potentially. So by doing this, we could lay this out to say, this is a pricing structure that guarantees us to be in transactional escrow in the next 90 days, right? Six month listing, we have a 90 day game plan. Well, that 90 day game plan at 5%, 5%, 5%, that $400,000 house now has got a 65, $70,000 price reduction over 90 days. Nobody wants it, but, but when we lay it out like that, then you get the sellers on the same page. And back in the day, and it might be coming again, I did, it wasn't an option. It was like, Andrea, here's the listing agreement. If we haven't sold it by August 18th, we're going to reduce it by 20 grand. If we haven't sold it by September 18th, we're going to reduce it another 20 grand. By the way, we're continuing all of our marketing efforts. All these things are still in place. But we're looking at the future of the market because it's a declining market. It's not an increasing market. Right? As we move into recession, they'll start having to lower the interest rates. That's the balance between those two. Right now we're in inflationary times. They're going to keep raising the rates. They're talking about a one point or a hundred basis point increase this time. And it's been 20, maybe 30 years since that's happened. Right? That's not doom and gloom. That's just reality of what the Federal Reserve is doing to try and get in front of inflation. And with the, with the uh, July inflation numbers coming out higher than they expected again, that they're going to have to be more aggressive to get in front of that. The rates are today, what? What are the rates today without looking at your cheat sheet? I already looked this morning. Anybody? I already looked this morning too. Yes, you did. <laughs> okay, so 5.72%. And then FHA is usually about a half a point less than that. So it's like 5.25% for FHA. So this is a national app I use to give me, because I coach in a lot of different markets. It might be a little bit different locally but find some way to track with that so you have the education, you're the knowledge broker of what's going on in the real estate space, okay? So with sellers, we could start having these dialogues. I'm already having, not gonna name any names, probably not even from this call, but I've already got seller conversations we're having where they're being really nitpicky. You didn't put that I have you know, hardwood ceilings in my house, that's why it's not selling. You didn't put that something didn't happen in my, you didn't put that I upgraded the tile in the kitchen in 74. So that is a conversation that is out of frustration on them. They think that there's more that can be done and there's some missing piece. What I want you to do is make sure that you're making it the market is rejecting your house, not me. If it was me and I was a buyer, I'd buy that baby, right? But I'm not the buyer. I'm your professional representative helping you present this house to the market. The market is rejecting it. It's not fair, but they don't like your price. I like your price. The comps show your price, but we're in a declining market. The comps have, are things that have closed between now and the last 60, 90, 180 days. So we're, we're looking at the market is in a downward movement. 
We've got to get in front of that, not chase it down. It's expensive for you to chase it. But again, I want to say it again. The market is, a, is uh, rejecting your home, not me. Not the buyers, right? Or the buyers effectively are the market. They're rejecting the offer, but not, not us as agents trying to sell it for you. All right? And then I always remind them, hey, remember, I've been paid zero dollars and zero cents for this advice up to date, right? Until we close escrow, there is no payday for me. So I'm giving you advice and professional advice for free. And so you don't have to listen to it. I just encourage you to listen to it because my best interest is in your net number, your bottom line. All right. So that's kind of the listing conversation. Any questions on that? Anything I can help with and kind of tie that together for you? Okay. So let's switch. I have a question, Randy. Yes. You might have already said this. I might have missed it. But whenever you talk to the sellers about price reductions at the listing appointment, or let's say they sign the agreement, do you put that verbiage on the agreement? Absolutely. So okay. in other terms, I usually will write, and I've talked about this before, is in other terms, I put one um, seller to pay a, a $395 transaction fee at the time of close of escrow and only upon close of escrow. I've gotten that for years, right? So that if you do 100 deals a year, that's, that's a lot of extra money right there on the listing side. But to answer your question, I go number two, um, if needed, price to be reduced on August 18th by 5%. And, and this is to be approved by the seller, but, but I also write it where I don't need the seller's approval. It's contractual. So instead of going, hey, it's been on the market 30 days. Well, you didn't put down. I just repainted the master bedroom. And, and I've, I've done this since then. I didn't see the updated MLS. All that doesn't matter when you have pre-negotiated this price reduction based on not having offers, right? And you want to tie it to offers, not showings and open houses and things. Um, sellers are definitely going to be asking you a lot more open houses now. Um, that is the nature of the business, right? Um, but it's up to you as a business owner to decide what's good for your business. If you have the ability to do five open houses a week, do five open houses a week. If you're only listing that, it might even be a good strategy, okay? So um, yes, you can. You could write that directly into the listing agreement and, and have it go that way. All right. I don't think we're quite there personally. I think the pre-frame pre conversation is really valuable right now about what to expect as we move forward. And if you're doing weekly updates uh, as you're progressing, then that is gonna be an opportunity for you to say, hey, last week we talked about this, last week we talked about this, and then we, we start laying this out. All right, answer your, your question. Do you still have your hand up? Do you have another question or no? Okay, cool, thanks. All right, so let's transition to um, buyer conversation. Right, A lot of the team members are working with buyers. We all want listings, I get it. But as we progress, buyers are becoming more valuable. What I mean by that is six months ago, you wouldn't have paid for buyer leads, right? Your buyers were not the, the challenge six months ago, right? So as we progress in the shifting market, buyers become more valuable, meaning that um, a, a listing may not be as valuable as having a couple buyers in the future for transactional business. It's just reality. We have to follow the market in some regard. So when we look at the buyer conversations, it's the same thing. It's, it's pre-framing what to expect for them. I like putting it in a positive sense. Tyler, thank you so much for choosing me as a buyer uh, agent. I'm, I'm going to respect that and, and you know, work hard for you. The good thing for you, Tyler, is a couple things. Number one, there's a lot more inventory to look at, so you're going to have a lot more options. Uh, the, buyers, the buyers have more power than they did a few months ago. You've probably heard a lot about rates and all these things. We just want to make sure you're comfortable with your monthly payments and what you're paying for the house within the current rates, right? They are going up, so it is more expensive for you to buy that house. But I really want you, Tyler, to focus on marrying the house and date the rate, right? So we can refinance that rate one, two years. As we progress, the rates are absolutely going to come down, right? We just don't know when. So I suggest you find the house you like, get in something you can afford, and then grind through, and you're going to build equity during this period of time, then we can refinance, put you in a better financial place with rate. 
But the good thing is we could ask for appraisals. We could ask for uh, inspections. Now we've been waiving all those things for years to be competitive and cash buyers, all these things. You have a lot more power now. So that's exciting, right? So Tyler, what concerns do you have about the market that I can answer for you now before we start moving forward looking at houses? Oh, I just keep hearing. Yeah. Somebody's got their boom. Uh, I just keep hearing from family and friends that, you know, it's in their experiences in the past, they should still just kind of wait a little bit. Um, so I just kind of, uh, you know. Wait a little bit for the market to come back wait, around. Wait for the market to come back around, possibly, you know, crash. Um, yeah. That's kind of. You know, my family keeps telling me to possibly. Absolutely. And you have to listen to your family, Tyler. I don't want to get between you and your family. OK, but here's what I've seen in the market after, you know, being associated with this team. And by the way, the edification of the team, you know, we sell over 100 homes a year. We've been in the market this long and edify the team. So you have value and say, you know, it could be uh, sound advice, but in my experience, if you sit on the fence, you're trying to determine when the bottom of the market is. There's no way to really determine that, right? So what I want to look at is appreciation. In 2008, when we had a crash, that was that was super fueled by the, the financial you know, meltdown. We don't have that this time. This is more uh, inflationary and all the other pieces that are contributing to the low inventory and all that things in the housing market. So most of the experts, and we can give you a couple of articles if you like, are predicting that we're going to still have continued appreciation growth over the next couple of years. It's just going to slow to a more mild and manageable pace, one, two, three, four percent, whatever it may be, instead of 18 percent we had last year. Right. So we might have a little retraction in that period. But the reality is, if you're looking at keeping on holding on to this home for the next one, two, three years, then that really doesn't come into play as much. But what we don't want is you to be priced out of the market with the continuing interest rate hikes that are going to happen. So I believe, and I'm giving you my professional opinion, by the way, you pay nothing for this, right? My opinion is free, but it may have a lot of value to you. If you get into the market now before the rates increase, then you're going to be in a better position because you might outpace yourself out of the market with rates. All right. The other side of it is we expect to have appreciation over the next one to two years, meaning even if it appreciates 2% a year, if you buy a house for 400 grand, it's going to go up eight grand this year. It's going to go up nine grand next year. You should have about $17,000 worth of equity in the next couple of years based on what the experts are looking at and predicting. And so with all those things being said, how can I support you? If you want to wait a couple of years, listen to mom and dad or sister, I support that. But I'd like to do more due diligence with you and look at what's best for you with the lender and I and so on. Yeah, I think definitely looking at some data be helpful. I'm okay. data oriented. So I think that would be highly uh, good. Okay, awesome. So uh, he just said he's an analytical, right? Looking for data. This is the kind of stuff where you can provide articles and data and different things. We do a lot of blogs on what's going on in the market so we can go back and reference those and they're published so it makes them have more value even though we just took them out of an article and reblogged them and reposted them. But absolutely a good conversation. Thank you, Tyler, for uh, playing along with me. So here's what I'd like to do. I want your, you know, you have objections in your head that when a buyer says it, you like, oh God, that, that's the one thing, right? So I'd like everybody to open up and maybe one at a time, and just give me an objection that you're having right now around buyers that I can give you uh, an objection handle or two and see how you resonate with that, see how you feel. Sarah, and you could either hit the little thing to put your hand up on the reactions button, you could raise hand, or you could physically raise your hand. Sarah. Um, so I actually am talking with somebody right now who is wanting to wait to get pre-approved until September. Um, but I told her that she should talk with a mortgage advisor now, but she was saying that they're worried about buying because they're worried about losing value in their home because they know somebody in Redmond that bought a condo for $425, and now I guess they're selling for 350 
Yeah, if they're going to sell in the next six months, it's definitely a valid conversation. So I would I... let's let's role play. You be them, and you answer as clear as you can for them. Okay. Okay. So Sarah, first of all, absolutely. If you want to wait till September, October, November, I support that. I just like to have a conversation around it without me feeling like I'm trying to sell you on. Is that fair? Mm -hmm. Okay. So why wait till September specifically so I could address that? Uh, we're wanting to save a little bit more money. Okay. Awesome. And do you have the ability to qualify for a loan now, or is that a requirement to qualify for the loan? Uh, I have the ability to qualify for a loan now. Okay. Awesome. So you have options. That's the good thing, right? Now the market is still moving up and interest rates are still increasing. So that, that amount of money you're gonna save over the next couple months, it may be insignificant compared to the rate increases that could potentially be coming down the road, okay? Mm -hmm. So that's something to consider. But more importantly, if you drove by the perfect house, you're looking in Corvallis, for instance, you drove by the perfect house, perfect price, would you be upset that you could not buy it because you weren't prepared? Yep. Or you would be upset about that if you could not buy it? Yep. So we want to get in front of that. We don't want that to happen because that can happen. It's going to cost you nothing to get pre-approved and ready to pull the trigger, but will cost you everything if you waited till September to do that, right? If you found that perfect house. Right. Nothing saying you have to buy it, but preparation's the key here. And then you could always improve your position and posture as we progress over the next two and three months. So we're not expecting to see a deep, like a huge decrease in housing value here? No crystal ball. It'd be reckless for me to say what's going to happen with, with certainty. Nobody has any certainty around it. But what we're seeing is there's inventory is increasing. We're seeing a little bit of price softening. Um, but again, if somebody overpaid, you know, if the house was listed for 350 and they paid 450 because of the competitive nature of the market a year ago, that's a gap between what it real value was and what the buyer was willing to pay. So that's the first part of the gap that's going to compress. That right? Because the house was really listed at 350, correct? Yeah. So there will be situations where people overpaid for what the market could bear. And if it kept going up, they look like a like a hero. But it topped out and now it's coming down. So those people need to wait for the market to recirculate back into that uh, appreciation to help them recover that money. Okay, that makes sense. Okay. So again, it's your choice, but based on what you've told me, I think it's very wise that we meet with Wilcox Mortgage, get you fully pre-approved. They could even tell you, hey, you can increase some things by this time, but at least if you find something you can't live without, we have not dropped the ball and put you in a position where you can't get it. Okay. Does that sound fair? Yep, I like it. And does it, does it sound like I'm supporting you and not trying to push you into this purchase? Yep. Awesome. I will continue to do that. Please let me know if it ever feels otherwise, because I don't want that from you. Awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, good. Good dialogue. Who else has their hand up? Anybody? I'm going to call on you if you don't put your hand up. All right, let's pick on the new girl. Ashley, <laughs> I'm going to be nice to you because you're... <sighs> You're brand new and I'm, I'm not right. gonna I'm not gonna be mean to you. Okay, still waiting on fingerprints. Yeah, no, no problem. So <laughs> what if if somebody says to you, like, I'm gonna wait and see what happens with the housing market, how do you feel about that? I I guess I just don't understand the, like personally, I don't understand the logic behind waiting because who knows what's gonna happen in the future. And if you want to move now, just do it now. Right. And somebody's got a little background noise. I don't know. Oh, it's me. I'm oh, sorry. okay. No problem. I got a family. I have four kids. No worries. No worries. No worries. So, you know, what I want to make sure that, that we have internalized the opportunities for buyers that they didn't have a few months ago. Yes, the rates have come up, right? But I want to, I want to really internalize. So you have the feeling of, of power when you have this conversation with them. When I have somebody that goes, no, oh, we're going to wait till this market. I'm like, what? You're, you're crazy. This is the most power that you've had in like two and a half years. How do you know that's going to continue? Today for a buyer is the most power they've had in two and a half years. Anybody disagree with that? Right? So if that's the case, you could, you could be passionate about that and be truthful and be integral. 
we don't have a crystal ball. So don't, I'm, I, I'm not saying things like I guarantee this is going to happen, or I'm sure this is going to happen. I'm not saying those things. I'm saying factual, the buyers have, have not had this much power in two and a half years. We're having a lot of buyers going into the negotiation process after their inspections again, right? That is a posture that you have only if you're in transactional escrow, contractual escrow with them. So again, I like having a conversation that says, hey, we have the most power. We want to go in and be as strong as we can up front, become the bride, not the bridesmaid. And at that time, you could sit back and let's rest on your due diligence period to make sure this was the great purchase for you, both in terms, both in inspections, both in all the things that come into play, right? Meaning that you're allowing them to take a breather, but we have to be aggressive on the front end or you're, there's no, 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 no negotiating happening if you're the bridesmaid, right? Unless you happen to get a backup offer accepted. So give me your feedback, takeaways before I turn it over to Andrea. Is this making sense for you? Does it feel like you have more, um, you know, more arrows in your quiver as you're going into these conversations with specifically buyers and sellers? Okay. Um, we have some last thing. We have some leads that we're now starting to receive in the team, and we're going to be doing some trainings on the lead conversation, scripts and dialogue practice. I know you're doing that now and an emphasis on how we handle the leads to take advantage of the time freedom or the time benefit to the lead coming in, as well as the contact made to the, to the buyer. I know on my side, it's gonna seem aggressive because it is. When, it, when we get a new lead, we have to be aggressive and almost stalk them to make sure we make contact in the first couple of days. Might feel, make you feel a little uncomfortable. I just wanna reassure you that we're not gonna have you do anything that's gonna put you in harm's way. We're going to do things that put you in money way, right? We want you to be in money's way. And the speed to lead is the number one thing. And then that insatiable follow-up until you reach them as a physical call or text is going to be the ultimate goal, right? So you could really qualify them into hot, warm, or cold and, and move them through the pipeline accordingly. Okay. Anything else for me? All right, awesome. Andrea, I'm gonna turn it over to you. And I think you're already host, but I'm gonna make you that way. Let me find it. Make co-host. Okay, you're co-host. You should be able to do anything you like. Ariel, do you need co-host as well? Um, yes, please. Are you, Randy, are you jumping off of the call? Nope, I'm gonna stay here. Perfect. Okay, I was just making sure, cause if you jump off and I'm only co-host, it'll kick it off. Oh yeah, no, I'm going to stay here. And in the future, the, the, the idea of this is I'm going to have kind of team specific conversations with my team and dialogue and role play and all that with them. And then Andrea will run her team and everybody's going to have the benefit of that, of that cross line understanding. Right. And we want to make it value valuable for you because what's happening in Reading may not be relevant to Albany and vice versa. But um, I think hearing the different, um, the different people's expectations and experiences and role play practice, all that's going to be what makes this powerful. And as we continue to grow it, you know, uh, it's going to be, it's going to be fun. So thank you. Thanks for, uh, uh, Ashley, thanks for participating and welcome to the team. All right. All right. Well, thank you, Randy. I love Absolutely. the idea of setting those expectations and the date. So I think that's going to, really help you guys to not have to have those awkward conversations. Good stuff. Okay, I'm gonna share my